Okay folks, so we are now on the driver's side uh, of the camper, having a look at some of the, the bits and pieces on this side. This is our storage side. This is the area where we tend to put all the, the general camping bits and pieces. Uh, obviously I've already shown you the kitchen side uh, and we, we segregate the two areas because we don't want dust and fumes and things going through. So a separate area altogether. Uh, this area comprises four sections. Um, the first one is our water tank storage, incorporating at the moment the standard awning that Irene mentioned earlier. Uh, there is the option of putting a second fridge slide in here, which enables a fridge freezer setup or whatever people would prefer to set up on, in their touring sit setup. Uh, above that is the electrical section here, uh, comprising a 240 volt charger and a fuse panel that controls all of the separate circuits. There's also, depending on configurations, a DC charger involved in there. This unit folds down for easy access, uh, all pretty straightforward, nice and compact and taking up minimal space. Moving back to this area here, this camper has the optional tool drawer and if I open it up you can see that it's a pretty cavernous drawer it's designed to carry all the the bits and pieces uh, with the ease of being able to access things so like you saw on the kitchen side rather than having to ferret right to the back of this area you simply slide the drawers out easy access to whatever you need in our case they're, they're, they're deep as well so we actually store our, our camp oven in the back here. Uh, we've got pegs and ropes and tools and all sorts of bits and pieces stored in there as well. Stored behind that in this camper is the battery. You can configure this without the drawer and the shelf, in which case the battery stores in a box right at the very back there and that leaves a large area for storage. This has been a popular option because it does enable you to compartmentalise and probably more efficiently store some of the bits and pieces you want to carry. Above that we've got our optional slide out shower unit. We've gone for this over a diesel unit because of the, the simplicity of them and the speed of them. So in a situation with a slide on we, are, we can often be limited as to how much water we can carry. The advantage of this is it's almost instant hot water. Therefore, with a small amount of water, we can get shower temperature water in no time. We can wet ourselves down with a litre or two, shut off, lather up, wash off. So it's a minimum of water to, that we have to carry. And, and everyone nowadays is much more aware of the GVM implications of overloading. So these work well, they're simple, nice and compact. There's the option on this one to have an integrated ensuite. Uh, alternatively, you can set up a pop-up tent out, uh, not far away, and away you go. Stored up here is our pole storage, it comes standard, so the awning that we were talking about around here comes with, with poles, obviously. This gets them up out of the way, quick and easy to access, it folds down. It extends right through to the other side and becomes a handy little shelf around the other side on the kitchen side. Uh, so poles just store up in there, clip up and lock it and out of the way. Next section is our bulk storage area. Uh, once again, as I was saying before, this is a bit over a metre deep, so even our longer chairs and tables, I have one over here somewhere. Um, I'll grab it now. Even a longer chair like this one here, which is our favourite camping chair, without worrying about brands too much, we'll quite comfortably fit up inside there. Uh, we would normally have a couple of chairs, we've got our nice lightweight table in there, still leaving room for a jerry can, for um, whatever other bits and pieces we might feel that we need to put in there. Once again, it's a big cavernous area and it enables us to carry all the bits and pieces we need for an extended trip. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, above us is the rope track that I was talking about for the ensuite. That's an option that some people will go for. 
that leads us to our wardrobe door here. So this gives us access with the tailgate closed to our luggage area. Uh, so we can throw our clothes bag straight in there, check the fridge, check the pantry, uh, and, and go, basically. But it also integrates, uh, for those of us who choose to go for the ensuite option, an easy access. So the curtain here is split, the shower row sits here, you can effectively step inside, get undressed, store your dry clothes up inside there, have your shower, and all your dry gear is ready to go. Okay, so once again, it all integrates, it all ties into our system of making things quick and easy and accessible. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, once again, uh, lighting on the door, facing away, uh, reflecting off the white here, plenty of light access to, to get whatever you might need out at, at night time. I think that's about it, Julie. I think we've pretty much covered all the the storage side. There are, as I say, options. Um, just getting back on that, uh, this is a retrofit option to put the second fridge in, so that can be done at any time. Uh, likewise, the shower unit, that's a retrofit option. A lot of, the majority of our options are retrofit, so we have a flexible system that enables you to build to a standard that suits you now, but incorporate other things as time goes by. Um, that's about it for now. We'll talk about the tailgate and the interior in another video. Thanks for watching.